You know, sixteen and Flacco. You know, sixteen and Flacco got into it. Who he yeah. spit on? Flacco. Flacco. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that's where you know Flacco from. No, but I, but I'll be watching Fl- mm. like Flacco. Like I feel like because he's so he's like an academics. He like baby academics. So Literally I, came right out of access. So I feel like he he. <laughs> Sorry, like, Flacco. People, if people hate academics, they are gonna hate anything like him. So I feel like they, like the camera, the spotlight is on him because he act like academics. So it's a good thing and a bad thing. You feel me? But it's more good though because people want to watch it just to see what the f- baby academics yeah, Flacco say. Definitely and he's funny. Yeah, yeah, and then his stutter makes him funnier. You think like if Flacco gets ran down on, that it kind of is like a bad look for Ack because that's like his son. No, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think nobody run down on Flacco though. Well, I mean, he did get spit on. That's but, yeah. That's the the first step. But he said nah. Nah, but if you watch that interview, six he was pushing sixteen to the limit. He was pushing his buttons on purpose. Bad. Yeah, I feel like sixteen played into his hands a little bit. Maybe, but I, I, it I was normally I would be so upset if somebody violated one of the hosts or spit on one of the hosts. But when I watched that interview, I was like, Flacco's asking for. I it. could see it. Yeah, you can't really just call somebody a cloud chaser to their face over and over and over like that and just think it's gonna be cool. Do right? you think getting slapped or getting spit on is the worst? Is the most disrespectful thing you can somebody can do to you? I'd rather you slap me because then we gonna, if you spit on me, it's over. Like, I, I don't know. Both are so bad. Both yeah. are so bad, but the spit is just even worse to me. I don't know. What if they spit on your booty? Smack you? Knock you out? That's then spit on your crazy. booty? Yeah, like, Some, that happened to somebody. That'd be that happening to everybody in jail. Apparently, apparently, yeah. in jail. Like, that's a new way. That's the thing in jail. <laughs> they doing the that in New York jail, too? <laughs> Listen, man, that be happening It's at Rikers now? It made its way there. Wow, yeah. really? Upstate. I wouldn't say New York like Rikers, yeah. but if, if somebody knock you out, to violate you, they're going to they gonna spin you. Ever been a better time for a no homo than when you just spit on someone's ass after you knocked them out? Like I don't know how you So mean. you really getting violated in in three different ways. Because you got knocked out, somebody spin your ass, and, and they're going to talk about it. So you That's just why got, they're doing you got the it. trifecta. You got violated three times. Oof. You got to live with that. Take me to Nebraska. I don't want to be in the wo- New York prison. No, they probably r- you in Nebraska. Like actually penetrating. I'd almost rather get r- and just have somebody spit on my boot. We got to interview the guy who started the, uh, the the Savage Life. Remember, Tay said he knows the person who invented it. Adam, you a kinky dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were ready to get raped. This you a kinky dude, man. Just kidding. I take yeah. it back. Because in reality, the spit would be way better. It's way less intrusive. But it's just as disrespectful, I guess. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're supposed to call you P2 for the introduction. Supreme Is Junior P2. Right. Whichever one roll off y'all tongue, easy at pause. Definitely. And you Supreme the f*** out today. Gotta rep my oh. Gotta rep. Gotta. You never seen nobody with no goggles and no glasses on at the same time. That is actually crazy though that Supreme came up in a pre Look, I got Supreme it in my era. Too. Supreme the Supreme Forces. Before there was Supreme Socks. <laughs> before there was Supreme the clothing line. There was, was Supreme my dad. the Street Legend. That's it. Yeah. You feel me? That's it. I mean there's a couple other dudes named Supreme, but I feel like he was the influence, though. You feel me? Because mm. there's nobody bigger than him with that name. I'm starting off saying nobody bigger than him. They, they've they been killing me talking about nobody bigger than him, but... In a specific world. Yeah, with the name, though, Supreme, like it's like a, a God body name. Like, Supreme means the most high. Oh, the most that's imp- the origin yeah, so of that, it? Yeah, okay. that's the origin. Yeah. So, yeah, so he was... His teacher named him Supreme. The dude who, like, taught him about the Islam God, the, and God, shit. the God body, the 5% nation. Right. And then, like, a whole bunch of other people just started taking on that that name from Brooklyn, from the Bronx. Like, it had been a whole bunch of other Supremes, but he's the biggest one. Right. Pulse. So your mom and Supreme were together? Were they were they ever, like, together for a long period yeah, of time? They, or? Was, they were together how, since 84. Okay. How many kids did he like, actually have? Okay, well, I just found out recently... Well, it's nothing been confirmed besides mm-hmm. me, but him being who he was, him doing his thing, probably got 10 kids, probably got 20 kids. Who knows? Right. But none confirmed. Okay. Yeah. And so your your life was like, how much was he in your life? As I mean, he went to jail when I was four. Four. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't really nothing. Right. But I mean, yeah. But that's I feel like that's like normal when your dad or your mom is in the streets, though, like. Right. The jail is inevitable unless you're going to tell, but he would never do no shit like that, so he's going to be gone. So your mom was like a part of the street no, life hell too? No, my mother, well, I'm saying if your mom was a part of the street culture yeah, or right. in that that realm, jail, death, or like ratting is inevitable. You feel me? Like that's what's going to happen. That's what you're going to get with that unless 
you make two million dollars and get out. But who really have that mind frame that make? If I made two million dollars this quick, I'm I'm gonna keep going. Right. You feel me? So a lot of people don't think like that. Longevity. But so, at what point do you start realizing that your dad has this reputation? Um, probably like eleven or twelve. Like I'm going to the barbershop in my neighborhood, and like I'm going in the barbershops, and like the guys in the barbershop, like yo, that's Bream, son. Yo, yo, come here, yo. They giving me mad wads of cash and like buying me sneakers, taking me this, going here, doing this, giving me the keys to their car. Like, and I'm like, yo, ma, who the f is this guy that everybody's saying is my dad? Because you know, me and her never really talked about it. So she finally sat me down and she told me like. And now that she told me that, I was like, oh, I can use this guy to get what I want? Uh -huh. Oh, let's do that. Right. So were you still growing up in New York or in yeah. Queens at the time? Yeah, in Queens, like literally in Queens. Yeah. Literally, in like right in the, the middle of everything where he was moving around, like I'm right there. All right, because he was from Baisley Projects. Yeah. All right, so where is that? He at? lived in the houses across from the projects, but that's in South Jamaica, Queens, though. All right, and you grew up in South Jamaica, I grew up Queens. four blocks away from the projects. In house, I was in a house, but I grew up like four blocks away from the projects, though. Was your mom ever concerned that his enemies might do something to her or you? Absolutely. Really? So you kind of grew up knowing I about that? I never went to school in Queens. Really? I went to school in Manhattan, private school my whole life. Wow. My mom, I'm my mom's only kid, so she was like very like, like very overprotective. Like she, I'm like her only thing that she has, you know? How long you got to sit on the bus to go from South Side? I had to a make driver. It? Oh, yeah. yeah I had a driver. That's far as f right? It's, it's like, like, like an hour. Okay. Like an hour, maybe 45 minutes on the train. Right. But it's yeah, like different planets. Yeah. Like a Manhattan lot, and Queens is polar opposites. A lot of people who grow up in South Side Jamaica, Queens, will probably never go to Manhattan. Or they'll That's go like once a year. Let me tell you a yeah. funny story about that. Yeah. So like me in high school, like I was dealing with like a lot of the Catholic school girls. Mm. And like I would bring them to like my neighborhood and the guys would look at them like you just bought white girls and Spanish girls to the neighborhood, like right. you're a king. Cause they wasn't used to that. They were used to the regular average girls in the neighborhood, stuff like that. When I started bringing the people I was around from the city to Queens and then bringing my friends with me to the city, it was like a shell shock to them. Mm. So I feel like I'm like the, the gatekeeper in a way. You was bridging the gap. So you said uh, you had a driver taking you to and from school? Yeah. So I'm guessing when your dad got locked up, you still had some money flowing around. No, but it wasn't from him though, it was my mother. What was she up to? She had a real illegal job. She she works like she's like a under it's the commissioner and then it's her position her title I forgot the name of her title but like my mom been even when she was dealing with my father she was always working like so was it a thing where like you were super well known and like everybody knew about your dad in South Side Jamaica Queens but then you go to Manhattan and it's like not an issue at all like but you know what's so crazy it kind of spilled over into high school really because then of, the kids start getting smarter the rap music you know yeah, the rap yeah, music he's saying people saying his names and then I'm, it might be two kids in the school from Queens and then they might know who I am and then they pass it to somebody that passes it to somebody and this is paying telephone before you know it, the whole school know who I am. Mm. So it kind of like when you, I feel like when you run away from stuff, it's still going to, it's still going to find you. Like you can run however far, but it's going to find you. You feel me? Me being who I am, it found me. Like my mother couldn't shelter me from it. She couldn't hide it. What's your read on why your mom might have ended up in a relationship with somebody who was basically like a drug kingpin because like at a certain point you got to kind of look at your mom and be like damn like that says something about you that you chose to be in a relationship with somebody who was living such a high-risk life mm, not really because maybe he turned it off when he was with her right maybe he wasn't that person when he was with her you know maybe people, he was all the way in before he even let her know like hey, yeah. this is what i'm doing yeah and also you got to remember too like in the 80s like either you were selling drugs or doing them true it was so, a lot more normalized yeah at the time, especially yeah. in new york so i mean like Oh, I'm dating a drug dealer. Like, that was the norm, like you just said. Like, yeah. you know, like, I don't think that's outlandish or far fetched for a woman to be dating a drug dealer in the 80s yeah, or the yeah. 90s. It's no, the regular shit. We just hit 600,000 subscribers on the Clips channel right here. We're trying to get to 700, so you know what to do. Smack that red button and subscribe. Appreciate you.